cutting up. Okay, I, I will start by introducing uh, my definition of a standalone claim, or at least the key parts which to me make a claim standalone. Um, and it's more like how the user is supposed to use it. Like while arguing for or against the standalone claim, the only thing which can be assumed is the claim itself. Anything that is not uh, within that claim, disagreement is allowed on, meaning that arguments uh, can implicitly reformulate part of the claim and those arguments are relevant. But what you cannot do against a standalone claim is arguing against that claim and changing the definitions that are made explicit within the claim. That's uh, what I wrote on Hangouts, just summarized here. So the, the, what makes it standalone is really that the only thing you're supposed to look at to decide to add arguments for or against is that claim itself, or all the formalizations entailed within it. Does that include links to external? So no. OK, so it shouldn't have a Jim Bob said it in this podcast. Right. Okay. So that, that's provenance, but I'm more worried about when you say definitions, like you seem to say definitions that are incorporated in the claim, but also pointers to definitions outside, right? I, I think what could make it standalone is the fact that you don't have, there's no pointers, like, like Bentley also asked. I think inherently it entails that the entire claim, the identity is made up by some format, some data we agree on, be it uh, to start with just some text, then it can yeah. indeed be some parts of the text can carry some additional formalism. That's also part of the claim um, on a conceptual level. Um, and the, the reason I'm hesitant to refer to external sources is because at that point it becomes dynamic and you don't know which parts of those external sources to include. So it should be a clearly delineated part of information that's immutable that you have to look at to interpret it. We could say that pointers have to be immutable to immutable structures. I don't think that's the problem, but pointers. The, okay. But it's an implementation detail at that point, and I think yeah, we no, no, should but, keep it at a conceptual level. Uh, but but well, I want immutability to... is really what you you desire there. I think, uh, right, Stephen? Um, yes. Okay, so I could agree with that definition, but I don't think it agrees to any anything. I think it's a vacuous, empty set definition. Why is it vacuous? What do you mean by that? I mean that no claim will ever fit that definition of standalone, ever, ever, okay. ever. Okay, how not? Just the text, this is a standalone claim. Oh, that's maybe a bit too complicated. Well, because, um, you have, because every word ha gets its meaning from the context, the meaning, the language itself, the cultural oh, yeah, community, yeah. the everything. The, <laughs> Nothing you're not getting, exists you're not getting in the, vacuo. You're not getting the concept then. It exists okay. in vacuum. It should be interpreted in vacuum when you argue for or against it. Again, the definition relies on the fact how you're supposed to use it in argumentation. And if it's not so sufficient, then we go to progressive formalization on it. But what else? That okay. would be a different standalone claim. A, a standalone claim yeah. that is well, more thing. sufficient yeah. could be a different standalone claim. So Mark Anton, at, at no time are we saying that the claim is ever fully self-sufficient, but it's but it the discussion happens under under whatever self-sufficiency it has. So if it's vague, it's left vague, and there will always be a, a certain amount of vagueness. Uh, and if you formalize it, then you create a new claim that is less vague. And we know that's an idea we'll never get to, but that's the concept. Is that okay? If if it's asymptotic and aspirational, I have no problem. So, but, but what I'm saying is it's not, uh, this is what I meant by it's, an, it's a relative and not an absolute concept. It's not a property of a claim being standalone. The property of the claim is at this point, we have not felt the, the need to make it- It didn't define more... it as a property. What? It was, I didn't define it as a property. It's, it's the goal of that thing is how you use it. It's standalone by the way how people should interpret it. Like a standalone claim, the goal is that the only thing how you can interpret it is what is within the claim. If it's I, not specific, what, what, what I'm specific saying is, enough. What I'm saying is this is never true of a claim. We can only say 
it's been used so far, its uh, usage has been as if it were standalone and until it isn't. Well, no. So I think what we're saying is that the claim itself does not have any pointers outside of it, except to immutable, you know, minute resources, right? But the, the, so the, the, the structure is saying that, I mean, it can be used in, in other contexts, but when you're looking at the claim, it doesn't take any of that context with it. And what I I'm saying, Mark Antoine is saying is that way arrows. I, I, think, I think I understand what both of you are saying. I'm not sure I can word it Go correctly. Ahead. Mark Antoine is saying that um, every time I utter something to anybody else, no matter what, um, there is context, you know, in that they, they have assumptions, which is assumptions that we both make about what I mean by words, you know, that, that we're speaking English um, and other assumptions that may come from, from culture. Um, and, and, those, um, and those assumptions exist. Um, if someone creates the standalone claim, Paris is nice, people are more likely to interpret that as the city, probably, simply because of the linguistic environment and the culture environment that exists in this world. Um, and, you could prob and, and so we, we can't escape that. Um, there is the fact that people will see a standalone claim on a website um, and um, will make assumptions. You can't escape that. But, that's okay, I think, I think Stephen, what you're kind of thinking is that's okay. I mean, of course, people are gonna make assumptions about what probably, um, um, you know, people will, the probable interpretations of this. What we're saying is that we do not artificially add any assumptions by linking out to something, um, by placing that um, claim in some context that's embedded deep in the discussion on a website where you are now polluting the, the context um, with all these different assumptions that people can draw um, from um, the way that the claim is presented, the place that it's presented, right? Um, and so, so we might, the misunderstanding might become um, from two definitions of the word context um, or you know, how we're de defining assumptions. Um, there's the assumptions that are inevitable in, in how people process language. Um, and then there is um, the idea that we're not adding any assumptions besides those inevitable assumptions about humanity. The, the, Does that help uh, at all? The, I, I, well, I, I, I understand I, what Michael Twain means and I understand what I mean, but Michael Twain doesn't understand what I mean by them being two I, separate I, I concepts. I think that's true, but let, okay, let me try to reformulate and you re try to reformulate because clearly I'm missing something. Uh, erasing provenance is a form of decontextualization. If you just mean, okay, stand alone because it, we don't, we have erased its provenance. Sure, that's fine. That's obviously so something I'm that not sure everyone exist. knows what you mean by erasing provenance. It's, it's, we're taking Paris is nice as a sentence without any elocutionary context. It exists as a string of characters in vacuum, and exactly. we, we don't know that it was yep. said in a certain now, conversation. Now, there's still technically a provenance. The provenance is the website where someone yeah, posted that standalone true. claim. Absolutely true. Uh, not if we agree that that is the format we share. I mean, if we agree that just a string is can be a standalone claim, then that becomes a data format we share. And it doesn't matter where it's presented on the website as long as we agree the standalone claim represented by that string. The, 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 it goes both ways, right? The string at some point was entered into the website and its inferred meaning at that point was the context of the website. But we can choose to even erase that, just look at the string in vacuo exactly. and not look at it. So that way standalone, but that's vacuous, right? It doesn't, but it's a trivial, it's a trivial notion of standalone. Now, well, why is it go, trivial? I think it's the exact notion of standalone that I'm implying. Uh, I don't think so, because then you say something about arguments that change definition or irrelevant, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not sure I see the link between my trivial definition of standalone, uh, meaning erase provenance, and anything inferred about which arguments are relevant or not. 
Okay. So if Paris is not defined, Paris is a nice city. Uh, Paris nice. is nice, sorry. As a standalone claim, erase of all provenance. What yeah. I'm saying is that any arguments for or against that that makes Paris more precise, be it, be it about a city or be it about a person, is relevant. Because yes. the standalone claim does not say that Paris is either a person or a city. Okay, I see what you're saying. And that, that I can agree with. Okay, when you said change the definition, I'm like, okay, but then all arguments are irrelevant. Okay, let, let, let me explain that. Claim, if, right? if the standalone claim is Paris, the city is nice, the city, Paris, the city being the definition of Paris here, but let's just say it in claim form. Paris, the city is nice. It's irrelevant to say, no, she stole my lunch money or whatever. I don't care. Mm -hmm. So like something related right. to a person, that's irrelevant because we're not talking about Paris, the person. Correct. That, that, that's correct. Uh, the, the, um, it, is, it is absolutely true that a standalone claim may contain enough information so that some arguments are irrelevant to it. That's fine. Uh, I think, but I don't think standalone claim contain enough information that pretty much any argument is relevant to it. Uh, no, 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 no. You, now, you're, now you're trying to go a, a couple of steps further. I'm not saying that a standalone claim cannot be more specific. We can have very specific standalone claims. And then that would solve your problem, but it no, would no, still be standalone claim. And the same reasoning about arguments being relevant or not relevant applies. The key point here is how those standalone claims are being used, meaning you only look at the claim itself and not to external sources. That determines relevance. Oh, and what what I'm saying is, I'm not sure anything is ever that relevant to a standalone claim. Because a standalone claim is a string of character, it's meaningless. It's only rendered meaningful by re-embedding it in a context. Uh, and then I you can start either. speaking about relevance. By the definition of ambient context that I described. Yeah, um, it is for example, a language. And, and, and so someone can make something very unambiguous and precise. Um, Paris, the city in France, is um, a good place to go on families with families for vacation, um, you know, or even more, you know, the, the planet Earth's surface approximates the form of an oblate spheroid. And that's plain English. Um, in the ambient context, um, that has a great deal of meaning and probably useful conversations can be had about it. And, and what I'm saying is the string doesn't have more meaning than a random, any random string of letters. It's only by embedding it in a context well, the ambient in context. Conflict, conflict exactly what Jonathan just said. Yeah. By, by, by embedding it in the ambient context. And, of and so of, of we'll language it. and time and space and community and blah, blah, blah. Okay, disregarding its usefulness. Can we agree on the definition? If, if, if we can go ahead with this definition of a standalone claim, that, that would be one step forward. I don't think we necessarily right now have to agree on it being useful that it's being modeled in a system. Because then, then we can move the conversation to a discussion whether or not it's useful to have that in the system at all. Okay, it, it, it is exactly what I call decontextualized claim. Uh, I think standalone claim is probably a good word, though. But I'm it's fine with standalone claim. Does, sure. And does the exact definition, as Stephen wrote it, meet that? Express that to you, Mark Antoine, because it sounds like we had a lot of discussion after I read that. I think it'd be almost better to say it, you know, in Mark Antoine's language of saying, it's a claim that has had its provenance erased. Is there, Stephen, do you disagree with that change? No, I think that fits, except that provenance is also, but yeah, no, I, I agree with that claim, uh, with the definition of it being part of the definition. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I got confused by the arguments about argument that change the definition are irrelevant. It confused me as opposed to making it clearer. Because so, it is a key property for me of a standalone claim is what determines relevance. Uh, for, that, yeah, that, for, 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 for me, nothing is relevant yeah. to a standalone claim. Nothing. So no, that, that's not true. Because it's meaningless. But in it's terms a string of, of characters. But as, how can you how can you make the claim that the string of characters is meaningless? It's I don't get it. I'm saying it's all, uh, if it's stripped of all context, it's meaningless. Anything only takes meaning in a context. 
Nothing mm. has meaning outside of context. Right. When you strip provenance, you strip context, you strip meaning. That's not true. The, the point is that any, you made any required shared context explicit in the standalone claim, all of that is all but the those, context those that is made yeah. explicit is a context that that you need to assume take for granted in order to determine whether or not you can argue for it or against for it to be relevant but then the the, the shared world i want to say the very reason we're able to talk right now we haven't made fully explicit what the context context is of this discussion yet we're perfectly fine well somewhat fine in communicating about this the same way goes with a standalone claim that the, the more specific it is the more shared context you li are likely to have, the less specific it is, the more likely it will be that you have disagreements about not shared assumptions. But that's the whole purpose of discussion is finding that. Identifying. Stephen, okay. is, Stephen is saying that there are shared assumptions, even in a standalone claim. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm saying there are temporary shared assumptions because we haven't elucidated the context. And, and they will change, and and somebody will come later look at that. What's the problem that what, what's the problem if two people look at a standalone claim and they don't have the same shared assumptions, and that gives rise to disagreements? That's what we want. Then we can see, oh, okay, people obviously are talking about more specific claims here that we can then make more specific, and the discussion can be guided there. There, there, there I agree with you. The um, my my point has been that at that point we are identifying context and we're identifying provenance. The, the 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 moment we decide oh this could be this or that, it's because we said oh actually there was a shared understanding before because of an implicit context. And by so I, again, Mark Antoine, I don't think there's an, a disagreement about the implicit context. Yeah. Maybe, but what, what, yeah. I, what, what I'm saying is, if you've erased provenance, uh, it's hard to understand what the implicit context was and to re, re uh, assign the but, implicit but you don't, interpretation. You don't want to if there's a shared assumption. Uh, some standalone claims for the majority of people we share assumptions. So this, this is what makes a standalone short claim useful in a lot of meaningful. everyday discussion, meaningful and useful as well, because you can use it. And 99% of the people use that expression with, they, they it will help you construct a conversation and discussion arguments. The 1% where that isn't the case, there a more specific standalone claim might be needed. But why do we need to include a very precise fully why why do you need to link everything to, to to context contextualized claims as you call them in order to achieve that because then you no longer have reusability and again yes yeah, stand, standalone claims the main purpose is to be able to reuse them in many and, different contexts now, now, now that part i agree with it's in the sense that at some point we are looking at standalone claims because we're not painting the context on the screen, basically, um, because it's too visually charged and there's multiple contexts and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we're looking at the, the, the standalone claim and we're in practice drawing inference. I'm saying the inference is tent always tentative, fair. Uh, and the question of relevance of another claim to that is always tentative, but that doesn't mean we cannot do it tentatively. Fair enough. What do you mean uh, by tentative? I don't think I fully got the last part. You're never certain that someone- That um, something is relevant to in, something because the interpretation the may vary. Yeah. The assumptions give you probabilities um, that- uh, It's not even probabilities. That is, that usually, well, yeah, if, if you're a robot, maybe you think probability is 98% that they mean this and not that. and yeah, it's not real world problem. It's it's every everything is tentative because we are dealing with uninterpreted claims in the case of yes. and, 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 and this is 
in that way, I agree. I mean, we're dealing with we're dealing with um, standalone claims, and what we're trying to do is say, by the way, this standalone claim can be could be interpreted as this one or this one that is probably also standalone, but you know, less subject to interpretation, uh, carries more context with it. And mm -hmm. then we can be, uh, relevance can be reevaluated in that context and something that was thought to be relevant will have to be displaced to uh, one interpretation mm -hmm. uh, or not. Maybe it applies to both, it's possible. Um, the... So that way, yeah, okay. So let, let, let's move on with that. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying the, the, uh, the meaning is not attached to the standalone claim. It's, it's, it's tentative meaning. Yeah, but meaning is always tentative. Yeah. So it recognizes that indeed. Yeah. Um, so, but that's the definition. We, we, okay. we don't necessarily need to agree that we want it. Um, but, but why I introduced the definition was to, to highlight the difference in multiple meanings of interpretation. So maybe now that we somewhat have maybe defined a standalone claim, you can define what the contextual claim is, but I think I have a pretty good understanding or a yeah, claim uh, with provenance. Yeah, well, decontextualized, it, uh, I said there's three meanings and actually it's worth going into. The first one is the just stripping the provenance. But if so you say I decontextualized, it might make sense if first I identify what a contextualized claim is. Yeah, well, not. okay. The, 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 I, I was saying I was using it loosely. And, and so now I'm trying to be more precise. So yes, uh, one meaning, and it's the one you're renaming, and that's fine, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good name. Uh, there's the standalone claim and the, what I call contextualized claim, meaning claim in context, claim with provenance. Uh, let, let, I don't know what's a good name for that. For that. I so is a contextualized con claim, a standalone claim with provenance? Let's let's yeah, let's call it. You that. added provenance to a standalone claim, making it no longer standalone. Yeah, uh, or rather, it's usually the reverse, right? We remove pro provenance from a contextual claim and we made it standalone. Those seems like two equally clear definitions. They're two equally, but I'm saying the process is usually from yeah. uh, contextual yeah, yeah. to decontextualized. Well, to, to well, there's, there's some ambiguity. There's some ambiguity still in there in who does the the removing or the adding. Um, so I don't think it's that clear cut because- I, I don't think there's ever adding. There's, what we have is, we have a contextual contextual claim. Either it also exists as decontextualized or as standalone in the system or not. No, but what, what is a contextual it, claim? It's a claim found in a context, in a document, in a provenance. And who did the finding? Because that, that's my question. Is, is, uh, it, is it the concept of, of like me uttering a sentence right now that, that conceptualized? Suppose that imagine that every utterance in the world we can store a model, then it's the fact that somebody has said something. Yeah. So because there's also the fact that some, somebody said that somebody said, right? I can, you can also say that I said something. Yeah. And then I might disagree. That, that, these two different ones are important to disambiguate, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. Because the, 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 the former we cannot really model in any way. I mean, we, we cannot model a, an interpreter of the entire universe that somehow stores everything that ever was claimed in a database, right? So there will always be someone say, there will always be someone adding a contextual claim. That's why I'm asking what's your definition that, that, of it. That, that, that's almost a good point. I like it, but it's uh, often the someone will be a machine looking at a document and extracting claims from documents, in which case the, the, the identity of the quoter is less important. What you have is somebody wrote a document and somebody identified claim and in some process identified claims in it. And it's not a human quoter, it's a yeah. automatic process. But it is, or isn't it linked to a standalone a claim? claim? So on, on the internet, you could uniquely identify a claim 
made by somebody precisely here and yep. uh, software processing these claims um, could store in a database. Here's the URL, here's the, the XPath query to get it ex the exact text for that. Um, yeah, and, and at that time, it was received at that time. Claim. But I understand it isn't linked to a standalone claim at that point then. It well, is, the database it, entry could have a column for a standalone claim, a column for um, you know, the, the claim that was found somewhere and a column that identifies where it was found. No, I, I'm saying it's two different things to say Paris is nice, that text was available on a website there. That's a contextual it, claim. It's leave words out of it for now. It's something different than saying Paris is nice, was found on a website there, which is meant to say and mean the decontextualized claim Paris is nice. Uh, sorry, not I decontextualized, agree. standalone, we said. I, I agree. The standalone one is a distinct object than the contextual one. I agree totally with that. So what I'm saying is you're either at some point you're encountering a claim in a context and then either it was already in the system, in which case it exists both in another contextual form and a decontextualized, and then you're just attaching the new contextual instance to the decontextualized. Or it didn't exist, so you could. Is decontextualized both. standalone here or not? Uh, yes, sorry, standalone. But is it or not? Because yes. I'm not certain it is. Yes, yes, yes. Here I'm, I'm using decontextualized as standalone. Sorry, slip of the tongue. It's a new term uh, for a term I've been using for months. So yeah, I made the same mistake just now. <laughs> Double checking. Um... And I've been using it ambiguously, so apologies, but yes, I've been using it to mean exactly that. What you defined as standalone, I've been using decontextualized in that term for months and years even. But I, I'm not certain. I think there's, there's definitely some differences in interpretation there that have to do with what a standalone claim is as we defined it before. Because if you, Okay, suppose that you have a standalone claim, Paris is nice, you have both the one that, that is about the person and one about the city. And yeah. Paris is nice is written in, in, in the text on the internet you found. Like which one of the two standalone claims are you gonna link it to? And who does that and who decides that? Or it's neither of the two and it's a only text one you're linking to. See, if you're, uh... I, I called it symbol in context, decontextualized symbol, because I was thinking more generically than claim. But the symbol in context is attached to a document because it's got uh, X pointer position it was found and X pointer may be too specific because maybe the document is a multimedia file and then I want start time and time or whatever way to express the selector. That's actually well-defined in uh, the web uh, annotation standard. Uh, and then there's a detach operation that gives me the decontextualized symbol, which is just the text. And okay, but is the text is the text the exact same text your symbol here as the standalone claim? Can you, in your definition of a contextual claim, can you write Paris is nice and link it to a standalone claim Paris is city is nice? So that's impossible. <clears throat> it's possible. It's it's at the uh, uh, yes, it's possible. The question is, Paris is nice the, uh, standalone. It, I would call it a decontextualized symbol. Okay, Paris is nice. Paris the city is nice standalone. I would. Uh, have it as another decontextualized symbol and there's a can be interpreted can be there's an interpretation relation between those two meaning it can be interpreted that way okay uh, in the if the in, if the interpretation relation is between two decontextualized symbols or two standalone claims in your parlance then necessarily it's a possible interpretation in the if it's between the each of those standalones is in a one-to-many relation to all their in-context instances. Like this, Paris is nice has been found here, there, 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 there. Those are all contextualized claim symbols. And there's a one-to-many relationship between those two. And same yeah, with Paris, yeah, the city is nice. You're not nice. hearing me because the, the, what you just glossed over was my question. 
no, no, does the it, text need to map exactly to the context you found it in for that link to exist? Yes. If 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 the text does not match, what you will have is the exact text match and some relation between the different text and the exact text match. You'll have the decontextualized claim, the exact text match. You'll have an interpretation, another verge variant, and then you'll have the can be interpreted as a relation between those. Okay, two. so we need a name for the can be interpreted as variant. What I have so far been calling contextual claims. What are you calling? We, I'm we calling also it the interpretation link. I'm um, calling it the interpretation link. And, and, and yes, and, okay. So, okay, we have an interpretation link and the other one you call a contextualized claim, right? There's a link, but there's an instance link between the uh, standalone claim and all its contextualized claims. That's the instance link. Yes. Okay. So your contextualized claim, I think, is really badly named because it's actually nothing more than a subset of whatever text in any source. It might not even be a claim. Correct. So, uh, it's so, it's, an entity. so it's just a source reference or something along those lines, if, if you would ask me to name that, because it's just a piece of text or maybe a, a segment of sec segment uh, seconds in a, in a video or... A decontextualized I, symbol is also just a piece of text. It's all about what no, 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 no. I'm, I'm more talking that the, the thing you call interpretation link is the, the interesting bit. It's the important bit that we need. I agree if totally. We're going to do, yes. And, and the, that's where you link any source to a standalone claim and you do the interpretation and you say, well, in that source, that is meant by that whatever piece of text. I, I, I agree totally with that. And, and But one thing I was going to say, and uh, we, I didn't get to finish that, and I think it's really important, is the interpretation claim can exist between two uh, standalone claims, in which case it means can be interpreted at. And it can also exist between two contextual claims, in which case it means can plausibly be interpreted at as in this context. So, or rather, it will be between probably, sorry, wrong, between a contextual claim and a standalone, meaning can be plausibly interpreted that as in, in this context. And there I should write it some, I should make an instance diagram. Here. Yeah, it's a, it's a different uh, definition of interpretation and, 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 we talk and, about. And, that, and that's, week, right? yes, exactly. That's the distinction you made. But what I'm saying is it's, for me, it's the same interpretation relation, but yes, the semantics is slightly different if the source, the destination is always a standalone, but the source can be either standalone or in context. And, uh, and for me, the, inter the interesting one is the contextual one, but, and the other one is just an abstraction of the contextual one. I'm just saying, I know it can be interpreted as that decontextualized because I know it's been interpreted as that in at least one context. But your milieu may vary. I'm not adamant about that. You prefer to look at the, the relationship between decontextualized and that's fine too. But what I'm no, saying no, is- I'm, I'm, I'm not ruling anything out. I'm trying to understand what you mean when you yeah, say interpretation fair. and why I highlighted two definitions was because I saw a clear difference between two of them. One in an interpretation link where you're saying that piece of text, that source is meant to, inter meant to be interpreted as the standalone claim with which yeah. the author agrees, usually. You, you might omit that, but in the majority or of not, cases, yeah. the reason why you're doing the interpretation is because you're trying to say this is a claim made by, in that piece of uh, yep. text. Um, whereas the other one is simply saying, well, this standalone claim can be interpreted as this other standalone claim. They're two entirely different operations. And I think for the sake of having discussions about them, I don't want to call both interpretation because it's utterly confusing. 
Okay, so, so let, let's have two names I don't mind because there is a difference. So one is the contextual interpretation and one is the, de I'd call it the decontextualized interpretation because for me, for me, and then I, this is not something I want to impose. The only way in which I would have the interpretation link between two standalone symbols, it's a projection of the contextual interpretation onto its corresponding decontextualized plane. I, I lost me, you. That. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, God, I need. Okay. Let me let me so, draw but, this. It, does anyone else want to try to maybe? I think it's helpful sometimes for other people to restate what they think they understand so far. Mm -hmm. I, I think I in, until that last sentence, Marc Antoine, I was following. I don't know if Felix or Bentley, you have any. Uh, I'm still trying to understand it, so I'd like to. Uh, uh, let, I can let me... maybe try to restate the, the last few exchanges. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Um, and so, Marc Antoine would define uh, contextualized claim in terms of a piece of text and the exact location on the internet or in the world um, where that text was found was was actually um, stated. Um, and um, then a standalone claim also happens to be defined as a piece of text. Um, I think Stephen is saying, well, yes, but that's kind of coincidental. Um, we can't say, um, and, and, and that's kind of blowing my mind, but I kind of get it. Um, but what, what, um, I think you uh, agree, Marc Antoine, is then you take a contextualized claim and you could say, well, in this context, um, this text was meant to mean this and point to uh, a standalone. standalone. Correct. Um, you could also take a standalone claim and say this standalone claim could be interpreted as that standalone claim. Um, the, in both cases, you can be making the assertion that this could be interpreted as that. And that's one type of uh, interpretation. And it's very um, forgiving. This could be interpreted as that. I'm not trying to say what year you meant. Um, no specific assertions about a person. Um, uh, just it's useful to like register, you know, that um, this, this might be interpreted as that. And that can be done um, in these different ways. Um, that, that's what I understand so far. So far, so good. I might just be repetitive, but. Um, no, no, that's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, let's, yeah. And, and, and we agreed in a way that there's two very distinct cases of interpretation, one between uh, a contextual and a decontext and a standalone, or, mm -hmm. and one between two standalone. And the one between two standalone is maybe interpreted, and uh, the one between contextual and standalone means, I think in this case, it should be interpreted as that. So I think Stephen is saying, are you saying those are different things or? Yes, he's saying, I think, yeah. He's certainly he's saying, saying like the assertion, um, okay, like the assertion that the person meant this, that's what it was in their head is different than the assertion, um, someone might interpret this as that. And, and so it's good to have these two different canon meant interpretations and maybe we need a different word. Um, it's actually interesting because in a contextual claim per Macintosh's definition, the source of text, both are possible. <laughs> what what I'm saying is there's when you're it's pure there's no fundamental difference, and what I'm saying is all cases of the relation between two standalone claims could be derived. I'm not saying must be derived, but could be derived from simply projecting. Like we have a triangle, right? We have the contextual claim. We have its corresponding literal uh, uh, standalone eraser. And we have its interpretation, which is a standalone. Okay, so that's a triangle. It's the standalone eraser, you mean the standalone claim that happens to share the same text. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So we have the contextual claim, its standalone erasure, and we have its, ah, uh, and we have the interpretation, infer, right? And so we have the interpretation, infer, which is another standard. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. But I, I think, yeah. Yeah, 
And what I'm saying is anytime there's an interpretation of the contextual kind, we can map it to uh, can be interpreted interpretation of the between the two and corresponding the, decontextualized the, claims. Of course, if it has been interpreted example. that way once, it can be interpreted that way. Take our parents. This, impl example. this yeah. implies that. Right. So, so and what I'm saying is, yeah. of course, you can also add uh, can be interpreted, which do not uh, come from uh, contextual context. one. Yeah. You could do that or not. I don't think it's terribly important. But what I'm, what I'm saying is there's no meaning, no real profound meaning to can be interpreted as other than this erasure process of saying, well, it has been interpreted at least in this one case, so it can be interpreted that way. Um, I'm, so I that think there's no me. fundamental difference between the two arrows. One is just a projection of the contextual interpretation onto the decontextualized interpretation through the erasure arrow. That's what I, I'm I claiming. Maybe that claim we can, I don't think Stephen it's agrees with you. Because we're, we're going for definitions um, yep. and, or at least finding the things we do agree on. So I, I think that's a good insight. If somebody says um, the words Paris is nice in some context on some website, and then somebody else says, makes the link, um, Paris is nice in this context means Paris is a nice city standalone claim. Um, we can infer a relationship from the standalone claim that happens to have the same text, Paris is nice, and the standalone claim Paris is a nice city. That's what I'm saying. I'm yes. saying, A, that erasure can always be made. That's, I think, an uncontroversial claim. And I'm saying it's possible to do uh, standalone interpretation without such an erasure, but I don't know how, how important that yeah. is, and I'm open to that. But what yeah. I'm what I'm saying, the real the real controversial claim I'm making is I do not think that the interpretation claim between the interpretation relation between two standalone claim has any meaning other than there could be a context where this standalone interpretation could correspond to uh, contextual interpretation. Okay. I'd suggest putting that, and that's a big claim. That's a big claim. In the bucket of um, things that... Um, I'm not saying it has to exist, but resolve. I'm saying it could always exist. Disagreements and, resolved later, maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to write that down. So I think I've made my point, Stephen. Open. To I think action. that's unfortunately most of the triangle and the erasure, and I, I, I have to rewatch it. Um, I'm not certain I got that. And maybe okay. if someone can. I, are you just saying? Are you just saying because of context, something can be interpreted in certain ways? That's why they're different representation of the same thing. Isn't that what you said, Mark Antoine? I'm I'm saying that. Uh, the relation between, if I have two standalone claims, uh, Paris is nice and Paris the city is uh, nice. But place. that's not the part I was confused about. Okay. I mean, I, I would even almost say that I agree on that. Yes. I mean, the, the only thing, it, it's the erasure part and the okay. put differently. I don't see the value of linking exact string match from standalone claim to a piece of source of text. I don't see value in that exercise because as uh, Jonathan said earlier, it is coincidental. The majority of use cases, what you want to do is link a piece of text to a different piece of text. The interpretation is the key integral component here. And the cases where that piece of text is going to be the exact same thing than in the standalone claim are rare. No, okay, okay, that's absolutely true. But what I'm saying is just a formal operation as the erasure. Whether you want to store it or not, I'm I'm using it as a way to think about things. But what but is being erased in which process? Then? The context, the provenance. So what I call you're erasure removing, is- You're removing the, 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 the piece of text in the source, you're removing the interpretation, you only have the standalone claim left. No, 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 is no. Is that no, what no. you call the, erasure? Erasure is not about interpretation. Erasure is just about context. It's about saying, I have Paris is nice in the Michelin guide. Okay, so that's uh, 
of whatever year. This is a piece of, uh, it's a claim in context. context it's, I would say it's a piece of text in context. It's not yeah, a standalone sure. claim in context. It's, a, it's, it's a only claim, a standalone it's a, claim in context when somebody it's not, is on the in It's a claim in context. I'm not claiming it standalone. I'm saying the erasure is the process of matching it to the standalone claim with the exact same text. That's what I, I'm calling erasure. That's just think of it as a mathematical definition. Okay. But that, that operation, I don't even, I don't. You, you may not see why it's useful. I'm just defining okay. it. Okay. Okay. So suppose that, okay. So you're assuming that any standalone claim can be rendered as text one way or another. It might actually be rendered to multiple pieces of text. But the, the, you're assuming any piece of, a standalone claim can has one exact textual representation in the system. Here I'm it dealing has, with. Has to. Uh, uh, th th that's that's a valid point. I am kind of assuming textual claims at this point. If we're going to look at uh, claims embedded in, say, images, we spoke about uh, non-linguistic images, which is okay. Like if it's a linguistic image or a video or an audio, we can speak about transcripts and its equivalent. That's fine. I don't care. If we're speaking about non-linguistic images, I was not thinking about that case. And we will have to, yeah, uh, let, let, let me postpone that. I have ideas on that, but I want to postpone that. So I think we've got a pretty clear definition, right? Bentley left, but I th think he he's on board with this definition. I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's a claim in context. It comes from a document. We say it comes from here, this place, and this precise document. And then I decide, choose to forget the provenance and extract the standalone, the corresponding standalone claim. Yeah, but Uninterpreted. Yeah, yeah. My, my question to you, Michael Twan, is where does the standalone claim come from? Because you're saying there's a piece of, uh, let's use my 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 uh, my word use for a bit. Let's separate the piece of text from standalone claim for for a moment. You are saying you recognize the piece of text Paris is nice in a source, which you yes. call a contextual claim. Yes. But so it's just a piece of text in a source. Now yes. you're removing the source. So all you yes. have left is a piece of text Paris is yes. nice. Which I, at no which... point whatsoever have you obtained a standalone claim. All you have is a piece of text. And you, of all people, might agree that a piece of text can correspond to many standalone claims in the system. I thought a piece of text is a vague standalone claim. It's a vague standalone claim. It's a, it's a, it's okay. a ambiguous, it's an ambiguous standalone claim. Yeah, I, I thought too that we could take a, just a piece of text um, and define this standalone claim as that piece of text or use that well, text to identify the standalone if, claim. Now, not all standalone claims can be identified. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's what you're saying is we, we might have maybe some notation, um, some sort and of- often, often pieces of text aren't standalone claims because something we didn't include well, in the definition of standalone claim for was that it needs to be a claim. <laughs> Yeah, and, fair, fair enough. And it and needs that, to be, it needs to work and, and as that's a standalone why, fashion. So it doesn't have indexical references. You cannot point to stuff to the context so because that, that, it's not that, a that, standalone that, claim. Let me, that, let me ask, is, is this, this concept of erasure really important, do you think? Yes, uh, and I'll explain why if <laughs> you'll let me go along with the definition. But the good point about it's not necessarily a claim and that's why in my diagram, I had a contextual symbol and uh, the you know, decontextualized symbol and symbol in context, because I'm also including entities. And you're absolutely right that some pieces of text are neither symbols nor entities. They're just random garbage or random strings. I'm not and saying- And I wouldn't equate those with standalone claims. And that, no, that's I, where the disagreement uh, uh, comes uh, uh, in. An entity is not a claim, I agree totally. But for me, for me, entity is the basic, uh, or topic, should I say? Uh, topic, topic is the basic uh, atom. Building block. And uh, claims are just one kind of topic. And so, but, but I do agree that we need to distinguish contextualized topics or topic instances and to use proper topic vocabulary, topic mapping vocabulary, topic instances, that is topic in context, uh, from 
random strings in context that don't correspond to a topic. Fair enough. But actually, in topic mapping, everything's a topic. So even a random string is a topic because you can talk about it, but not in the same way. So let's speak about strings of text which happen to correspond to either an entity or a claim, an argument, something, some meaning. OK, so those are contextualized. So there's no interpreter. Uh, there's no interpreter whatsoever. And for those pieces of text, you can, through one mechanism or another, retrieve the standalone claim or standalone entity or whatever. Uh, but no. for the sake of the discussion of today, let's focus on standalone claims. Yeah, yeah. yeah Nobody's exactly. doing the interpretation. So it's the, the, the idea is so, okay. Somebody isolated that string as opposed to the string two characters bigger because mm -hmm. they thought this was meaningful. This had meaning as a topic. Okay, so that's a human operation. Somebody ascribed meaning to that string of text. Then there is the erasure process where we say, let's consider this string of text abstract any context. It may happen to be an entity, it, Paris. It may happen to be a claim. Paris is nice. Let's assume it's a claim in this case, or let's, entity would work as well. But let's assume it's a claim in this case. So here uh, you lost me at the assigning meaning step because I don't know what that implies. Uh, I think that this is this piece of text means something, as opposed to. So that is interpretation. That's a human process. I'm not saying what it what the meaning is. I'm not say I'm not writing it down. I'm not formalizing it. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm just saying. This has meaning to me. That's all I'm saying. And, and that's why I choose to single out this piece of text from the document I took it from. Okay. It might be the whole document. It might be two letters. I don't care. I'm saying this has meaning to me. That's all, all that I'm okay. implying by identifying a topic instance is what I would call it, mm -hmm. which string of text location in the document. String of text, document, location, and document. That's a contextual, a topic instance, AKA uh, symbol in context, um, which could be a blame or not. Uh, I can erase the document and location and just consider the piece of text standalone, and that's a decontextualized topic, which again could be a claim or not. Yeah. The operation of interpretation will often take the form of saying this, so let's say Paris. Paris in this case, well, well, we'll often do it on the contextual one. Paris in this case. I would say always. Pretty much. Means Otherwise Paris, you're talking about a standalone entity or symbol or whatever. Which is possible too. See, okay. So, okay, there's two cases. There's two cases. One is I, I take Paris in the context of this sentence, in the context of the Michelin Guide on France. So I'm saying in this case, Paris very much means Paris, the capital of France, okay? I'm assigning a, con and what am I doing there? I'm putting an interpretation relation between the contextual string of character Paris in this document and there is the capital of France, which may be a longer term, or it's Wikidata identity, or whatever way I have to have decontextualized topics. Uh, or, or send one along instance topics. of which is one, yeah, exactly. One instance of which is a longer English sentence or a longer French sentence, or as I said, Wikidata entry, I don't care. It's, mm -hmm. they're all decontextualized topics. Mm -hmm. This induces for me automatically a relation between the string Paris, decontextualized topic, and that uh, Paris, the capital of France, blah, 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 the more explicit context, uh, standalone topic. So it's, it in, entails an interpretation relation between the ambiguous standalone topic and the, the uh, less ambiguous standalone topic saying, that's and where you, interpret it as. That, that's, that's my where triangle. You even last time. Um, you, you went from a piece of text where you take away um, the provenance yeah. um, 
Um, so you had text with provenance mapping to um, say standalone claim. Now you take away the provenance and you have text matching the standalone claim. And you're saying, therefore, you, from that, you get standalone claim mapping to standalone claim. What Stephen said at that point is that you cannot necessarily match that first standalone claim you got from removing the context um, or you can't necessarily match that first piece of text that you got from removing the context to a standalone claim. And he said that because a standalone claim won't necessarily be represented by text. Sometimes it will be, but it won't necessarily be. Okay. And, and so I, I, did, I, did, I did say I did say I would put the non-contextual the non-textual things apart. Yeah. So, but so I think I think Steve, you do understand that you you can in, infer a relationship. Um, you can write a program that sees okay, there's a link between um, this text um, and this standalone claim. Therefore, we'll find a standalone claim that coincidentally is represented by the same text and infer a relationship. There's nothing coincidental about it. It's my well, process. Okay. Well, <laughs> Stephen says coincidentally. Um, yeah, and I uh, that 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 and, drives and me nuts. Says, okay, I'm, I'm, sorry, sorry. I, I said coincidentally, trying to interpret Stephen. Yeah. Well, um, when you only we, when you only point to the text, it's coincidental. When you're pointing to the act of interpretation, of course not. That's the process, and I'm fully on board with the interpretation being that modeled as part of that piece of text in that source. Can be interpreted as that standalone claim. I'm fully on board with giving that whole thing a name, which to me always was a contextual claim. But I don't see what a contextual claim is without a reference to a standalone claim. Let's put it that way. Like the the whole. I, I don't see why you would point a piece of text to a standalone claim without any interpretation or source, for example. The 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 the. the... I'm okay. You what you will do as an operation, right? Is take the most likely is take the contextual claim. So the piece it, of text. Piece of text in context. Yes. And map it to a standalone more. But who uh, does the mapping? You, a human, a human does a human. the mapping. So, yeah, a yeah. human doing it's interpretation. an interpretation link, yes. It's yes. an interpretation link. Fully yes. agreed there. Yeah. With a standalone, more explicit claim. So that's one operation. What I'm saying is at an automatic level, what I will do, and maybe you won't want to do it, but what I will do in my system <laughs> is map that original contextual claim to the it's erasure, which is the ambiguous standalone claim, which is just taking the piece of text, no more, no less. That's what I call the erasure. That's so the process. How... One second, I'm not done. Yeah, yeah but will, like maybe, will, maybe will... it makes sense whenever I'm doing the whole explanation that I can ask questions but I don't understand. Otherwise, we keep going in circles. Okay, okay, okay. So I understand you want to do that automatic mapping, but I have some questions about what that mapping does. Because you can okay. have a piece Belly, of text. Belly questions about why. Uh, if you have questions not, about not what why, I'm doing, not, go ahead. Not why, how. Like if you have a claim yeah. of text, Paris is nice. Yes. In a document. Yes. And, and you're trying to automatically link that to a, a standalone claim. Paris, Paris is, is nice. nice. Paris is nice. Just a string, which is my decontextualized claim. Yes. If that document states, I fully disagree with Paris is nice. Yes. What, what what are you automating? Are you automating that the claim occurs in that piece of text, or are you automating that that piece of text is trying to claim Paris is nice or Paris is not nice? Like which of the two are you trying to do? Mm, I don't care. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway. I'm not I'm not I'm not mapping intent here. I'm not I'm, I don't uh, how should I put it? Uh, I will probably map Paris is nice and. I disagree with Paris is nice, uh, but oh. as two distinct overlapping uh, decontextualized claims. Uh, and I'm not claiming that the document claims either of those to be true. Okay, so there's no, there's no- um... This is a mechanical process. I'm taking a contextual claim, I'm removing the context and I get an ambiguous decontextualized claim. This yes. is a purely mechanical blind, no intent, no, Thought, no okay. interpretation, no semantics. So maybe we can go to the why. 
Yes. Well, let, well, let me, and, and I will do the equivalent, also no semantics, going from the interpretation to the interpretation, the, the, the corresponding interpretation link between the two standalone planes. Yep. Right? I, I think that's very clear now. So the question is why? The question is why? The what question do you is, do with that link? What will I do with that link? The idea is this tells me, as I do this in many contexts, that this sentence, this string of characters can be interpreted diversely as many different, more less ambiguous standalone claims. That no, means only, when, only in the interpretation case, not in the former case where there's no interpretation, where it's just a string of text, right? No, 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 that's not true. We started from an interpretation. We started from saying there's a link between the, the contextual claim and the interpreted less ambiguous standalone claim. Okay, so you always have interpretation and you're simply saying that and then I can do, be, yeah, so different pieces of text operation. can be interpreted as different ways. Yeah, okay, I get that, fine. Okay, good. So next time I meet that sentence in a new mm -hmm. context and somebody wants to say, oh, I want to interpret it, I'll be able to say, oh, by the way, here are various different interpretations that have been made of that sentence in different contexts. Maybe it's already one of them. You just have to click on it. It's a suggestion tool. It's a suggestion tool. You might perhaps mean Paris, the city is a nice place to visit. And you might per perhaps mean Paris right. Hilton is a nice girl. And you might per perhaps mean uh, yeah. Paris, the Greek hero, is has been uh, right. nice and in its interaction been, with whatever prison. User interface where okay. you decide, OK, I want to submit an interpretation of yes. this claim um, might pull up a bunch of suggested interpretations with the most common one. Yeah, at the top, but so this is what I also intended to do all along, but nowhere in the story is there ever that thing without interpretation. The interpretation is always there, which was my point. And interpretation is always there, which was also my point. You always, what I'm saying is the interpretation between standalone claims Almost always, or as far as I'm concerned, always comes from. No, no, not between. We're talking contextual. My, That's exactly the, the what I'm of, saying. A piece of text in your system will always come along from interpretation in the source to a standalone claim. Yeah. What, what you saying, want to automate from that, you want to derive and then have all piece of text and different interpretate. But the interpretation is always there. You're never going to have an automated system without an interpreter that browses a piece of text and automatically that, links. I made Paris that very nice clear to... at the beginning, yes. Okay. That I was okay, starting now it from human interpretations. <laughs> yes. That, that, so makes I, I me, think... that makes me say that for me, a contextual claim is inherent. Okay, but I see what you mean. So your contextual claim is your piece of text. So you can, yeah, you can have different interpretations of contextual claims. We just need clear terms for all of these so we can keep exactly. talking about them. Um, and, and, and what's great also is we've got a great definition for interpretation. Um, I mean, it's very clear that interpretation is simply a link and someone's got to declare, you know, this is an interpretation somewhere, um, but yep. simply a link between um, yep. either a contextualized claim and a standalone claim or between a standalone claim and a standalone claim. Um, perhaps there's even other contextualized to contextualize, but it sounds like a mess. Um, well, that's very clear as a definition, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and the, the, by the, by the way, the reason I think it's worth materializing the ambiguous standalone claim is that it becomes a pivot when you look for uh, all the uh, interpretations of a given sentence. Yes, exactly. So we all, we all agree there. The differences do come from different use cases still, like, because my primary use case for interpretation is to figure out whether or not people agree that that is a claim being made in the source, which for me, it, that carries, that's more it's interpretation right. with, with ascribing uh, intent. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, fair enough. But yeah, let's disambiguate all of these. So, so, so I, I think I really need to write this down. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I've made, I should, sorry, I didn't earlier, but I, I need to make a diagram and to make it, I, I, I'll look, for me, this is almost category theory, right? It's, uh, I'm 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 uh, doing a. If you write it down, I I will insist. I find it utterly and 
so confusing to call a piece of text a contextual claim. I find it not useful because, as you said before, it doesn't even have to be a claim. I can interpret like incorrectly I, I, I will, I will call because it interpretation object. interpretation can be incorrect, right? Interpretation can be random garbage. So I can select like whatever piece of text. Yeah, but you you think of the abstraction right now? Um, yes, I am. It is. I would call it what it is. It's 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 a piece of text in a source. Source text. It's a topic instance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's it's. But what threw me off from the beginning, topic. just just as a comment, is that you call it a contextualized claim because that carries for me the whole thing with interpretation, whether or not the source claims and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If you're just referring to a substring and a source, I use something much more atomic. That could be that that I understand. And but but and it's true that. It's, it is not just any substring because it's a substring that somebody decided had meaning. Yes, but the, it's the interpretation that makes it a claim, right? But you, you can't have the meaning without the interpretation. So if, if, you, if nobody no. selects that substring and says this is a claim of that single claim, it's only by that process that you can start talking that it might be a contextualized claim. Uh, yes and no. Uh, what I'm saying is somebody could just select it not interpret it and say, this is a claim, and that's enough. OK, let's see a different operation we didn't define, but uh, agreed. Just to be clear, the entire confusion for me came from you calling that piece of text a contextual claim. Fair enough. So I, I, I would pick something different. Fair enough. <laughs> topic instance. I'll use topic, topic instance. instance I, don't, I don't think that's going to stick, Mark Antoine, um, because there's a whole um, field of theory, I don't think. Everyone yes, symbol. and I'm using yeah. it. <laughs> symbol. I, I don't. I, I never disliked symbol because it could be a set of pixels. It could be a, a, a segment of audio in a. I didn't dislike symbol in your diagram. Fair enough. The 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 the, the, the it's true, but that symbol. And, and here is where I'm not. I'm saying it's not. A, it's not just any symbol. It's a symbol to which somebody has ascribed meaning. And even if I don't know what the meaning is, even if the meaning wasn't there. Somebody okay, but the software engineer in me, the software engineer in me tells me we can decouple that separation of concerns. You can call a combination of a symbol and an interpretation and a, a standalone claim. The triangle you described, that's potentially somewhere in there if it's your, your topic. But Mark at one said it can exist without the explicit interpretation. Ex exactly. Like some, but but someone what says this can, can be inter interpreted. And that's enough. But that's one okay. Then we're talking about different types of interpretation. You're saying a symbol. We can again then ask the why, but a symbol to which somebody declares this has meaning to me. Yeah, I, I think we need to define that. That's what I call a topic. I, I think we agreed that we're going to define standalone claim and argue about its use separately, right? So yeah. Um. Um. But didn't you say a topic um doesn't have to be a claim? A topic doesn't have to be a claim. So what about a topic that is a claim? What would we call that? A claim. It's a subclass of topic. Well, it's, it's not a standalone claim. Yeah, so it's a, standalone a different claim. type of claim no, no, than I guess. There, there's two, uh, just I, as topics, there's topic and topic instance, and then there's claim and claim instance. Right. And I, I think I think you think of that, oh, claim instance is inter interesting, right? Um, Because it kind of, it's, it's in, in context, contextualized, contextualized claim. AKA it's what you meant instance. by contextualized claim. Yeah. Um, but it has interpretation because you no, say no, that it requires claim. someone to says it has meaning. So it has interpretation. Yeah, so I don't see mean, why it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the interpretation has been materialized. It does somebody declares it has meaning. That doesn't mean that they've given us the meaning. No, but I still I, there's still interpretation. I would just say whenever someone does whatever type of interpretation, being it just saying it has meaning or it has specific meaning, we can call these two differently, but both act on a symbol, I would suggest. Yes, that's correct, that's correct. But I would only call it a contextualized claim if it's a symbol plus interpretation. And then the question is whether or not when you say contextualized claim, you mean symbol plus interpretation plus standalone mm -hmm. claim. Or you mean symbol plus interpretation without optionally? Uh, okay, when, when you, I think that there's an operation where you declare this symbol, this this symbol instance, I should say, 
that is symbol in context, happens to be meaningful. So it happens to be a topic. So that's an operation. Is it useful to allow to say, oh, not only is it a topic, but it's a claim. Not only is it a topic instance, but it's a claim instance without giving the interpretation. I'm not sure that is a useful. I think that saying this is a meaningful topic in isolation without giving the interpretation is a useful operation. I am undecided whether saying it's a meaningful claim, more, not just a topic, but a claim topic uh, without interpretation. Is that a useful operation? I'm undecided on that. I suspect yes, um, but it's vaguely agnostic. Um, but what is clear is that most of the time, the, the useful, the really useful operation is where we take a symbol and uh, interpret it. And then we can, at the moment of interpretation, we can say, oh, that's an entity, that's a claim, that's an argument, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the, the argument- And I would go further, I would call it a contextual or an interpret contextualized claim or something. But yeah, we, uh, if, if you can write something along those up, I think I agree with pretty much everything you said except terminology then. Okay, and I good. think it would be nice if we can present some uh, yes. con con consistent I won't have terminology it for I won't have and it for tomorrow. Uh, discuss it with Timothy next. I won't have it for tomorrow, but I'll try to write it for Friday. And it's late. <laughs> yeah. It's my third meeting, sorry. <laughs> I think some progress was made. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, folks. And sorry, it was a bit uh, <laughs> difficult. See you next time. <laughs> see you next time. Ciao. Yep. See you next time. Bye.